Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So today we are going to discuss about the role of REST signaling pathway and uh, in REST signaling we have discussed that there are three pathways. In my last lecture I have elaborated the role of two signaling pathways. Today I am going to show you the REST signaling pathway via RLA route. RLA route R we can say the red signaling pathway mediated uh, efficiency via RLA GE complex. Let me change the color over here first so that we can discuss this pathway. This is a pretty straightforward pathway but it has a very positive role uh, of activation in numerous signaling cascades. So basically REST belongs to a super family of roughly 151 member proteins and these proteins are collectively called as G protein like complex and these are uh, uh, based on uh, sequence homology it has been established that roughly around 58 percent sequence similarity is being observed among these members and the salient members of this REST fam family are elaborated as are written as Rao REN, REC. So these are the few uh, salient members of RES family and uh, among these salient members these RAU, REN and REC are the complex and then there is an additional molecule which you came across often which is called as CDC42. Now basically this member classification the reason of its classification not like a conventional R starting uh, member it is labeled as CDC42 this is because it was initially identified in yeast alright so how RS signaling communicates in, in is uh, channeled via REL REL GEF this REL GEF is obviously an active form and this REL GEF is basically also acting as on and off depending upon GER GDP formation GDP or GEF formation is also influencing this complex GTP or GEF okay so guanine exchange factor is basically responsible for the activity of REL and this REL in its activated form is termed by the influence of GTP complex so this GTP complex turns this REL into an active form and REL in active form remain binded with GDP. So how and what kind of signals in, are being communicated upon the activation of REST as we have learned in our previous lecture. So once the REST complex has been active that means the REST is having a binding with the GTP complex. So this complex leads to the activation of REL and this RAL complex activation is also been influenced by GEF guanine exchange factor and which leads to the activation of GTP bound REL and this GTP bound uh, REL leads to the uh, further activation of two salient members now these two salient members are called as REL A and REL B now what is the uh, uh, do excuse me with the numerous REL and REL like isoforms present over here but these all proteins are doing a very interesting thing that inside the cell let this, let's say this is the out of the outer portion of the cell and this is the inner portion so what is happening is that suppose this is a RAS and a GTP bound complex it is basically trying to tether this REL GTP formation, REL GTP scaffolding more towards the cytoplasmic facing of the plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane facing inside the cell is containing this REL GTP formation and it is actually tethering or it's gaining an attention of two additional cytoplasmic proteins which are called REL A and REL B. Okay, so this scaffolding protein structures uh, 
are communicating further signals inside the cytoplasm and gaining the attention of few other molecules they are called as secretory proteins and these are these are generally called as sac exportin exportin 84 and this exportin 84 complex 84 and then there is an additional protein which is called as rel binding protein rel binding protein so now we have a jargon of information right now with us what is that first there is a ras and gtp active formation which tries to bind with rel gtp and this is influenced by uh, and the further downstream signaling of rel a and rel b this rel a and rel b activates these further kind of proteins and these proteins are labeled over here right now upon the activation of secretin and exportin 84 these two complexes translocate inside the nucleus and inside the nucleus they are responsible for performing uh, different functions so they are actually meant for an anchorage independent growth so in cancer anchorage independent growth is being facilitated by this pathway and this pathway RAS RAL GTP leading to secreting and exporting 84 activation leads to anchorage independent growth of the cells so all those signals which are triggered by a cancer cell to survive and not only survive but proliferate are mediated by secretin and exportin 84. Now rel BP is all uh, the next third protein which is responsible is basically what you can say suppresses. Now it is basically meant for the suppression of again the earlier mentioned CDC42 which was initially identified in yeast that's why it is labeled as CDC42 and it is also responsible for the suppression for the suppression of another protein which is called REC now the suppression of CDC42 leads to the formation of Philopodia Philopodia complex now Philopodia formation is helping for what you can say motility so these two factors and REC suppression is basically meant for lamellopodia formation so lamellopodia formations are being uh, influenced by here so let me change and let me draw some structures more clearly over here so lamellopodia formations so lamellopodia so if we can summarize the whole event today is that the RAS GTP active form triggers RAS GTP which leads to the uh, scaffolding uh, attraction of REL A and REL B and then REL A and REL B collectively trigger three more core components. They are called as REL binding protein 1, secretory protein and exporting 84. So all these proteins move inside the nucleus and once they are transformed inside the nucleus they are meant to trigger following events now this ones are meant for growth and for by growth I mean anchorage independent growth independent I'm just writing over here so anchorage independent growth is being carried forward by excretion and export 84 while rail binding protein suppresses the function of RAC and CDC 42 both these proteins upon suppression facilitates the actin cytoskeleton formation of lamellopodia and philopodia structures so lamellopodia formations and philopodia formations are basically something like this now this is considered this as a cell and the cell movement at one point is under the influence of flagellum like structure this is called phladopodia and lamellopodia formation you can elaborate it uh, somewhat like this an appendage like structure present and this appendage like formation appendage like formation of a cell is the lamellopodia formations generally lamellopodia formations are more thicker in shape as compared to a single flagellum like protrusion you are noticing over here so if we summarize that rest signaling pathway is activating how is channelizing through how many pathways so we can write it down and elaborate it over here what we have discussed earlier was there are three channels 
this is a concise summary of uh, what we have studied so far. So the first foremost part we have discussed was ref. So rest molecule X spawn ref, and from ref it is uh, further activating kinase dual kinase specificity MEK in MEK X spawn Eric one or extracellular regulated kinase two, and this extracellular regulated kinase. 1 and kinase 2 activity is further being communicating inside the what you can say nucleus through different transcription factors and these transcription factors were called as ETS1 and it was called as elongation factor 4 and you can label it as over here MSK1 now this MSK1 is basically meant for chromatin remodeling and this elongation factor as the name indicates it is basically responsible for protein synthesis and the ETS is basically meant for transcriptional machine reactivation transcription activation right so we generally call this mechanism of activation as uh, what you can say map kinase pathway also was labeled as over here this is MAPKKK -K -K. so MAPKKK -K -K signaling or we we labeled in our last lecture it as a dual specificity so MEK is responsible for both tyrosine and uh, serine threonine kinase activity so it has a wider audience to phosphorylate so map KK is labeled over here these ERIC1 and ERIC2 are called as MAP K. So that's that's why mitogen activated protein kinase signaling pathway is also labeled over here under the influence of REST. This is the one root of REST we have studied. And uh, in the same lecture, we have also discussed about the activation of AKT pathway. So for activation of AKT pathway, we know this is the phosphorylation which was being induced on, on lipids. So for phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase activation, this activation is leading to the role of following members number one that was AKT and number two what we learned was uh, uh, then was another additional member which was we called as Rao G E F alright so we talked about AKT pathway that is called protein kinase B and this protein kinase B is actually responsible for number one suppression of apoptosis so for the suppression of apoptosis what it do it actually suppresses it actually suppresses BAD which is the pro apoptotic protein so its suppression its suppression pro apoptosis so suppression of apoptosis I am just mentioning over here in a very brief way so that you can have a concise summary in your mind suppression of apoptosis so suppression of apoptosis is achieved by AKT via inhibiting the translation of BAD and then there is a complex which is called as ROG let's hold it for a while or we can write it as it is triggering what you can say it is basically phosphorylating it is basically phosphorylating GSK3B GSK 3B. Remember in my wind signaling diagram we have shown and so GSK 3B upon phosphorylation is basically halting what you can say in it is unable to phosphorylate beta ketamine. So it is basically triggering proliferation of cells. That is how REST signaling affects wind signaling pathway. Okay, so it is in its phosphorylation leads to degradation and this degradation is basically a promising thing for beta ketanin complex to trigger the cells for proliferation otherwise GSK3 beta is responsible for the degradation of beta ketanin but upon phosphorylation of GSK3 beta it triggers proliferation okay so this is how this is another channel we have learned in our last lecture and in this final lecture about RAS signaling what we learned was there is another molecule RAL GEF uh, exchange factor and RAL GEF exchange factor uh, 
basically triggers two molecules. They are called as rel A, rel B. They are the two forms. And now these rel 2 and rel B, they all, they collectively are responsible for the secretion of three proteins we have discussed over here, the main core elements we have talking about right now. So this is secretin 5, exporting 84, and then we have talked about CDC. Uh, in fact, uh, not CDC right now. In fact, it's a binding protein. Rel B P one. That's a rel binding protein. And this rel binding protein further affects downstream two mediators, CDC forty two and Rec. And if I change the color, that will be more elaborative over here. So it is basically stopping the expression it is basically halting the expression so let me erase few blue lines from here so that the story may be more clear to you all right and if we use the same thing over here so that would be more interesting to remember for the students so akt pathway suppresses pro apoptotic complex of bad okay so suppression of apoptosis is induced over here by the lipids, over here by the protein-protein interactions, and over here the CDC42 and REC for we can generally say it is basically meant for cellular motility, and these two components are meant for growth, encourage independent growth. All right. So in this lecture, very briefly but very concise information regarding the activity of RAS through either protein-protein channels our lipids are through the exchange factors are being elaborated thank you very much for your time and attention about the rest signaling this is how the uh, the growth factor epidermal growth factor and any growth factor receptor activates and communicates via rest a uh, few more important points are that inside a cancer inside a cancer that means in majority of the cancers the core element the core mutation or what you can say the core component abrasion which is affecting a larger audience would be RAS right so the RAS mutations or anything which is went wrong in RAS is actually responsible for a wider audience the channel may be abrogated from this part or may be affected by this region that's a philosophical point the mutations of RAS have a larger audience to communicate uh, in comparison to RAF because in case of RAF the mutation scope would be leading only to one signaling pathway right which is RAF MEK Eric pathway that's why the mutations which we are noticing in skin cancer in skin cancer as I have discussed in my last lecture in skin cancer majority of the melanoma patients contain 50% RAF mutations that means they must have an other gene involvement that is genetically abrogated and most of the time the complementary mutation which is also facilitating their point is AKT AKT so protein kinase B pathway is also being abrogated in skin cancer patients so there are two core elements upon screening for RAF and AKT protein kinase B that need to be targeted for uh, skin cancer treatment plans all right in case of RAS, you know if the uh, if uh, what you can say the core element is disturbed, all the three pathways are being abrogated. But if one pathway uh, have some genetic mutation, you need to have a complementary pathway that is also been disturbed so that the effect should be more pronounced for a cancer prospector. Okay, that's what we have uh, discussed, and it is quite logical regarding the efficiency and audience for uh, oncogen. So we learned why RAS is more important as compared to RAF oncogen because of its multi-dimensional approaches and signaling tasks. Thank you so much for your time and attention.